Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo, I'm going to take you guys back in time, back to week 7 of the Pokemon Premier League, where I actually neglected to upload my battle up against Frank C. Trode and the FC Volcarona. Uh, so if we pop back in time, you can see I actually ended up bringing um, dual Scarfers with Pangoro and Rotom. Uh, also have a nice mix to Bama Snow, a Dragon Dancing Zygarde with Adamant Max Attack Life Orb, a very defensive Chandelure, and a very defensive um, Slowking. Uh, I brought Thunder Wave on Slowking just because I was overall worried about his presence of speed on his team. Really wanted to slow some things down where I could. And then um, I also figured he didn't have a great switch in against Chandelure besides Snorlax, which doesn't really like to get burned. So to bring a more defensive one allows me to take um, hits kind of here and there and spread status around, absorb some hopefully fire type attacks from Entei and get some flash fire boost. Now on his side, I was really worried about him bringing uh, Hippowdon because um, then he could play the weather war with me. So I did want to make sure that I brought Hippowdon, um, I mean the Hippowdon counter, which is a bomb of snow. That's a little bit predictable though, so I also, um, went ahead and utilized Zygarde here because if he didn't bring Hippowdon, even if it had Ice Fang, Zygarde is so bulky that I could use it as setup fodder. Uh, with the Dragon Dance, I could basically sweep his entire team. Um, and then I went with Scarf Rotom because that would be a very reliable lead. If he had Hippowdon, he has to make the guess if I'm going to Hydro Pump him. Uh, he also had access to Rotom Mo form, which I was very, very sure that he would bring and bring that Scarf. So I wanted to be able to at least speed tie with that to force some 50-50s uh, overall. Uh, outside of that, I didn't think he'd bring any of his Pokemon such as Polyrath, Stoutland, or Spinda. Um, he definitely wouldn't bring Stoutland if he didn't bring Hippowdon. Those two kind of go hand in hand, of course. Uh, I did expect Mega Gardevoir and Starmie to come just because of their sheer offensive presence. I couldn't really fit rocks anywhere on my team. And I also didn't want to bring my own Clefable because I was pretty sure that he would either bring coverage on Entei. Um, Entei can get Iron Head. And of course, uh, Sacred Fire can hurt Clefable. Um, and then of course he does have Cobalion too, which I didn't want to put Clefable in a position to try to fight off Cobalion or try to fight off Sludge Bombs from um, Golbat. This wasn't really something that I wanted to play around, so if I could avoid those situations, I did want to do that. Now leading off, definitely want to lead with Rotom Wash just against the team that we see that he has. He doesn't have any switches to Volt Switch. So that'll be really, really nice. Um, if he did decide to just switch into Snorlax too, I could get some nice uh, momentum and go right into Pangoro. He does start off with Gardevoir though. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. I can really, really, really cripple this thing if I just smack it with a Hydro Pump right now. But I missed the first Hydro Pump. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be kind of the story this entire match. This isn't going to be a very haxy match. I'm just going to tell you that now. Um, I didn't really have anything I wanted to bring in to um, Gardevoir, uh, so I, I end up just staying in there. Um, go out into my Scarf Pangoro now. I was very close to clicking Drain Punch, predicting him to switch, but I also wanted to eliminate an item here. He does end up going out into Cobalion, but I do remove his Choice Scarf. So that means that my Choice Scarf Pangoro is now faster. I don't like giving him that justified boost, so I have to go out into my Slowking here to take any hit, which allows him to get up free Stealth Rocks, which are really going to hamper my team during this match. I wanted to prevent him from getting those up as early as he did, but with the loss of Specs Rotom that early on, like that, I, I just didn't really have a good way to stop him from getting up the rocks there. Uh, he does go out into Gardevoir, which gets paralyzed, which is pretty awesome, because now my Slowking outspeeds it. Um, Scald actually does a decent amount for me not having any investment. He gets paralyzed. Uh, it didn't really matter right here. Um, but I do just get to go for some more Skulls, which is nice, uh, taking him down to around half HP. But he's still able to 2-hit KO me with Hyper Voice because he gets a crit. Uh, this was a pretty... I think I ended up going mostly physically defensive, but I did put some mixed defenses on it. Uh, I didn't really put any special attack investment on it though. Um, I can bring in my bulkier um, Chandelure here just because, oh, I can just bring it into the Hyper Voice, but he gets another critical hit. And that does hurt. 
Uh, but since he's paralyzed, I'm faster. I didn't think he'd go right up to Snorlax because of the prevalence of Will-O-Wisp. But he does go the, do, with that play, and um, I figure I can just pain split here, get my HP back, lower his HP, it's good times all around. He does show me the curse, so that means he is going to have crunch most likely. Uh, so we're going to go back on into Pangoro here to eat up the crunch. The Captain Crunch. Eat up the Captain Crunch series. Anyways, this is a good switch in here. Uh, once again, I kind of over predict. I'm thinking she's going to want to switch out again. But this time, he's going to stay in with that Snorlax there. And the Body Slam paralyzes my choice scarf, Pangoro. Which basically neuters my poor, poor Pangoro for this matchup. Um, I don't really have any good switch-ins to a plus two uh, body slam either. So I go with Zygar just because it is relatively bulky. I only put enough speed in it to outspeed uh, Swift Swim Polyrath. Uh, assuming Polyrath was adamant after plus one, I think is what I ended up doing. So um, I do get a critical hit with my Earthquake. Don't feel bad at all about that after that exchange because, man, that hacks. Um, also, since I was adamant Max Attack Life Warp, it was a little bit of a roll if I needed the crit or not to, so that's kind of nice. Uh, Starmie, I don't have anything I want to switch into you. I could go into Slowking, but he could also use Thunderbolt, and since I've already lost my Rotom, I can't afford to lose my um, Slowking. So we are going to go out into Obama Snow here. I figure I can get off a free Mega Evolution and just click Earthquake. He could go into anything else. He could even switch into Golbat, but then I can threaten him with Ice Shard, which is nice. Uh, I figured if he stayed in with Starmie, he would have Hidden Power Fire, which would suck. But I, I kind of just wanted to keep him honest there. Uh, so I do get the Mega Evolution off. He goes into Entei, which is perfect because Earthquake does a ton of damage to Entei. Finally getting a little bit of momentum back on my side of the field. This hail is going to be very nice and whittling down Entei if I'm able to make some key predictions. So here we're going to go out into my Slow King just so I can see what item he has. Uh, I go out into Slow King and he goes for Sacred Fire and if he's Banded it actually would do a little bit more damage than it did when I calc it. So I knew he wasn't Banded but I still didn't know which item he had. He could have Charcoal, he could have Expert Belt. A little bit weird determining that but I did know I can't take another one of those. So we're going to switch out so I get my Regenerator boost. And I could hopefully take uh, any type of um, move from Entei going in here. He actually goes for Hidden Power Ice, which is perfect. He was definitely expecting Zygarde, it looked like. Uh, but here I ended up staying in, hoping that he would overpredict that I'll switch out again. But he has Bulldoze. Ugh. But since I am a little bit more of a bulky Chandelure, I'm able to take the Bulldoze. And we're going to get one of those delicious double downs this turn where he loses Entei to Chandelure. And my Chandelure goes down to its own Life Orb. So, uh, I don't mind that completely. Chandelure would have been really nice to have, especially in the late game. But, since I got Entei out of the way, that now allows my Abomasnow to breathe a lot more easy. Um, here, I figured he would go into Cobalion. It's not Scarfed anymore, but I can take any hit from it from my Slow King. I just went for Thunder Wave in case, uh, no, right here I go for Slack Off, excuse me. Uh, the next time that happens is when I go for Thunder Wave. But this first time I went for Slack Off because I did need to get my HP back and my HP levels were getting pretty critically low. Starmie versus Slowking, I might be able to outstall him. Uh, I, it's harder to do if he gets Scald Burns. Here I just went for Thunder Wave so that I could force the Starmie out because I knew he would want to switch out to get the Natural Cure, hopefully. And that allows me to just start launching Psychic Attacks. I also could have gone for Scald, but... um. He, it will be pretty nice just to switch directly into my Obama Snow while he's paralyzed because I should outspeed him because I'm running a mixed speed nature instead of a minus speed. Uh, I think this one's mild to be precise. I am hoping that I don't get burned because I want to use Earthquake. Fortunately, I don't get burned, which is nice. And here I know he's going to switch out. I'm not going to go for a Giga Drain. We're just going to go straight for a Blizzard because that hits all of his team pretty hard. Uh, even Cobalion resisting the Blizzard is to it KO'd by it, so that's really, really, really nice. I do wish I had gone with Trick Room, which was my initial strategy for this battle, but I just ended up not bringing it because I thought it was too obvious. And here I was sure he was going to go for Volt Switch because I could have easily switched into my um, Slow King, but he ends up just knocking out my Obama Snow on my over prediction, which really sucks because now I don't really have a reliable way to deal with Golbat. Uh, and that also leaves Slow King and uh, Zygarde in there in just the little dynamic duo to take on four Pokemon, four or five Pokemon here. So uh, he is going to switch out as I go for Thunder Wave, which is a good call on his part because his uh, 
His Gardevoir is already paralyzed from earlier. Um, we're going to get into a little bit of a stall war here as I try to get some HP back and he tries to 2 KO me before um, I get KO'd. Uh, before he gets KO'd on a paralysis, rather. Now, I did know I need to go for slack off on that first turn instead of just attacking. Even though I figured I could live two Hyper Voices, I needed to stall out that extra turn of Hail so that I could actually be gaining leftovers instead of it bringing me back up to where the Hail knocked me down from. We come dangerously close to that KO point, so I am happy I did slack off on that first turn. But now, I'm kind of in a position where I'm forced to slack off until he gets paralyzed. I can't switch into Zygarde, of course, and I can't really go for an offensive move, because if I'm below 50% HP when his next Pokemon comes in, then Gobsmacker is going to get uh, gobsmacked, I guess. Uh, he finally gets paralyzed, and that means we're going to be able to take down the Gardevoir, which is nice. He's going to go back out into Starmie. He's going to go for Skull, just fishing for burns here, really, which, why wouldn't you? That's a, that's a great way to whittle down Slow King overall. Um, I'm going to slow him down with Thunder Wave, and we're going to go for a serious, a, the super serial serious of of uh, just, just Hail Mary plays here. I'm going to hope that he gets paralyzed, go into Zygarde, and try to set up a Dragon Dance. With a Dragon Dance... Um, not only will I be able to, number one, outspeed Starmie and KO it, I'll outspeed the Cobalion, and I'll outspeed Golbat all very, very nicely, and be able to one-hit KO every single one of them after a Dragon Dance at plus one with a Life Warp. So, uh, after all, I'm basically just sitting in here stalling him where he is because I wanted to lower his HP Sun to see if he has Recover, I need to force him into using it. Uh, so he does use Recover right there, and he's like, okay. Perfect, so I know he has the recover. I need to bring in Zygarde on an opportunity where it won't be getting hit by an attack, was the idea there. But I did need to make sure that he had recover before I went through all that. Uh, the Scald Burn that he got earlier is going to be very instrumental later on because of course that completely offsets my leftovers recovery. The, the Scald damage from the attack is pretty insignificant, but the burn whittling me down is just really debilitating overall. So here, I'm gonna go for one more Psychic that's going to bring him down to around 50% HP, which is right where he used Recover last time. And that means it is finally time to go into Zygarde and go for Dragon Dance. Now, I could have gone into Zygarde and clicked um, Earthquake. I could have gone into Zygarde and clicked Outrage. I could have done either one of those things. But both of those leave me in a weaker position against Cobalion, which after, um, say, I go for Earthquake here. And I go into Cobal and he goes into Cobalion. Cobalion is going to outspeed Zygarde, and then he can go for a coverage move to hit my Slowking. And Slowking is going to be in a range where he can just go for the Volt Switch, then go out to Golbat. So I was really hoping that he would get paralyzed, and he did not get paralyzed, which is not like it was owed a paralysis to me or anything. But that was a real Hail Mary play. I was hoping that it would come through because that was really my only way of winning. Um, if Slowking weren't burned, then I could outstall the rest of his team. Uh, we do get a critical hit psychic as kind of a little um, commemorative memorabilia prize where they give you a little token that go, you tried, and 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 then you just go home and put it on your sad shelf. But that, that doesn't stop me from trying to lower this differential here. He still has three Pokemon left. We're going to keep on attacking. I'm uh, going to keep going for psychic, and that's going to be actually enough to go ahead and drop Cobalion, which is pretty nice. That thing should have been KO'd so much earlier. So, so very much earlier, but we're just now taking it out. Uh, so now he all he has left is Golbat and the Starmie. And if this were a physical Golbat, I actually might have been able to win because physical Golbat can't really do much to um, Slowking. But since he's special with Nasty Plot, after a Nasty Plot, he's going to be able to 2 KO me with Giga Drain. Uh, I did go ahead and paralyze him to give me at least a 25% chance. I know I can 2 KO him if he's the standard defensive build. And so um, if he got paralyzed either here or on the next turn, I can definitely 2 KO him, at least lowering the differential to 1-0. and And I'm not going to go through a stall war with Starmie at the end. I just, I'm just not that type of player to do that. But uh, I did want to try. And so he does break through the first time. We see how much damage that the Giga Drain is doing, so it's not worth continuing that charade. And he does break through a second time, meaning that Godsmacker, who put the team on his back this battle, finally goes down. So that is a very, very rough, intense, uh, left me feeling whew, just completely worn out as intense as that battle was. But that was a rough 2-0, or 0-2 rather, that we lost against Frank. 
but he's a fantastic battler. So I was not salty at all after that battle. It was more of just, just like, man, that, that was a heck of a match. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you to, um, Aqua Clauncher for letting me know that I forgot to upload week seven for the Pokemon Premier League. I, I completely slipped my mind. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you later. See ya.